Let me show you how we can make like a bit of a cutlet out of this, okay? So let's say you've got a roast. You know, you cut the roast off, whatever end you, you tend to use, or the center, whatever you want to do. And we're going to go through, make that cut here like we did before. Butterfly it open, but except this time we're not going to stop. We're going to go all the way through, okay? Now this is quite simply and very easily a butterfly boneless pork roast. Now it's called a roast technically. In some ways it's a lot more like a steak. Uh, this is something that is fantastic, right? And that's all it is here. Uh, fantastic to throw on the grill or to throw in a marinade. Put a nice bit of seasoning on that. It grills up real nice. Um, you know, it's a wonderful cut. Super tender. Uh, and as you'll notice, not a lot of fat on there. Now listen, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. Fat is beautiful. However, if you don't like it, if you don't want it, you know, try not to trim too much of that fat off. You're not going to find a lot on this uh, on this cut to begin with, uh, and you want to maintain some of that moisture. So, so try not to trim it off too much. If you really want to or you need to, obviously go right ahead. But this is not going to be uh, the the fattiest cut of pork that you're going to find. Part of the reason for that. Uh, ties into some larger issues. Around the 70s, 1970s, uh, the pork industry underwent a major change. Uh, you may have heard this thing where you, they say you have to cook pork, you know, until it's done. Don't eat it if it's pink, blah, 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 anything like that. Um, you know, you have to be cautious, obviously. You don't ever know how meat was handled, uh, in all cases anyway. And, and I, I think you you know, that's our duty, right? We should find out more information about how our meat was handled. But that's another topic for another day. But um, in the 1970s, the pork industry underwent a major change. There was a lot of concern over the trigonosis virus. Uh, that is, uh, it, was a, it was a foodborne uh, sort of uh, illness that would come most associated most closely with pork. Uh, and, and, and to fight it, um, they said, you know, you have to cook this meat thoroughly all the way through to make sure everything that might be in it is dead. A lot of that came from the way pork was fed. Uh, and the types of, of foods and, and other non-food items that pork was fed, pigs will basically eat anything. Uh, and that was part of the issue is, is some of this, uh, uh, these foodborne illnesses started in, in the food that the, the, uh, the pigs were eating. So, again, this underwent a major change in the 70s. They cleaned up the industry as a whole. They, they changed completely everything that the, the, uh, the animals were eating. Uh, they cleaned everything up. So... Really, this is not an issue anymore. And of course, it's a butcher's job uh, and the job of your store, supermarket, butcher shop, wherever you are, to make sure that this stuff is fresh and well handled. But because of the changes made in the industry, this is not a huge issue anymore. So one other result, one other offshoot of that is you see a much leaner animal in general. Um, and you don't get these big fatty cuts of pork uh, in general anymore. There's some exceptions to that rule, of course, but bottom line, this is how it goes. So, okay, there you have it. That's a great piece for the grill, the uh, butterfly boneless uh, uh, pork center cut loin. Now, let me show you another thing that we can do with this, all right? I'm going to reach over here. Got a couple pieces of wax paper, which is pretty good. Uh, butcher paper is really great. Uh, if you have that, it's got, got the uh, coating on one side, generally keeps things safe in the freezer. Um, I'm going to grab this piece here. So another thing we can do here with the center cut loin, put it between a couple pieces of wax paper, okay? And if you have a great kitchen mallet, kind of like this one, I just got this one recently, it's not too bad, got, uh, got the... You know, the, uh, I don't know, what are these things called? Anyway, got those on each end, the tenderizers. Um, I generally use the side because it's flat. Uh, if you could find a good maple mallet, something big and heavy, that works out really well too. So when you, when you put these between two pieces of wax paper, because you don't want this to stick, uh, you can make kind of like a poor cutlet out of it, okay? Now when you pound it, we're not trying to kill it. It's already dead. And that's something that uh, is, is pretty obvious, but a, something that's really important to reinforce, right? You don't have to kill this when you pound it. When you pound it, you want to make, you know, 
kind of quick strokes, but a little, little bit of force, okay? So you're gonna come down just like that. Really all you need to do, right? And keep at it. Sometimes this takes a while, but you don't wanna hammer down on that meat too much. You can also judge that a little bit by the thickness as well. Uh, and as it starts to flatten out, you can begin to sort of shape it. So your strokes are gonna be a little more like this. Right, so you got a little bit of a rotation going in there, and that's going to flatten out the piece of meat so that it kind of spreads and thins out real nice. Now, as you're doing this, you also uh, want to make sure you don't want to hit it with the corner of your mallet, uh, you know, this corner or any of these edges, because as you do that, you know, you're going to kind of dent the meat and it's going to make like a divot in there right and you're going to go right through the piece so you want to make sure this is landing nice and flat you make making nice even strokes with enough force to do the job okay and as you do that i'm not going to go too crazy on that because it does take some time it takes a little bit of time to get that as flat as you need to but as you do it uh it begins two. Now see, this paper wasn't supposed to stick, but it did. Anyway, all right, so you see how it starts to flatten out a little bit. Um, not the greatest pounding job I've ever done, but like I said, I was keeping it short. I, I would have done that for a couple more minutes and, and kind of moved from there. So that is yet another option uh, that you can uh, utilize with the uh, boneless pork loin. Mm -hmm.